500 down by 1%. And FedEx coming out with its strategy for cost cutting. We saw Cummins yesterday, uh, which is a heavy uh, truck engine uh, company, um, coming out with a revenue downgrade. And also Alcoa downgrading its forecast for aluminium demand from 7% down to 6%. And then, of course, Standard & Poor's coming out overnight and downgrading Spain to a triple B minus. So there were some growth concerns around, but when the job numbers came out at 11.30 a.m., that really put some of those concerns to rest. We saw the job numbers coming in ahead of expectations. The market was expecting 5,000 jobs to have been created and the unemployment rate to have ticked up to 5.3%. On one hand, the jobs number was better than expected. We saw 14,500 jobs being created. But on the other hand, we saw the unemployment rate ticking up more than expected to 5.4%. And that was really due to the participation rate with more people participating in that labor force. But although the Australian share market did see a turnaround, it was still a defensive uh, day. It was those defensive sectors which outperformed. So it does look like those concerns over growth still are baked into and uh, as shown in the Australian currency as well as in terms of the Australian share market and defence is really winning the day. Now Julie I want to ask uh, for your take on this one. We saw it fall victim to lower prices today and a real shock in terms of the production numbers. Now this confused me because they were flagging production cuts as far back as July. Why the surprise today? We did see uh, those product production cuts being flagged on the back of weaker demand and the hope was that if we did see production cuts being uh, seen that we would see some support in some of the mineral sands pricing but we've seen further evidence from that report today that demand is softer than expected we've seen mineral sands revenue down by 58 percent for the quarter so while those uh, cuts were expected to have seen a decrease in production and a decrease in sales as well I think the number was a lot steeper than expected there had been hopes that some of the leading indicators that we've seen in China and US in terms of the housing market had also uh, resulted in a bit more demand for some of the zircon products as well as the titanium dioxo products but it doesn't look like that's flow th flown through and the real catalyst for Iluka shares is the housing market a lot of its products is used in ceramics which of course is related and has a high correlation to housing in the US as well as China but unfortunately we haven't really seen that flow through so once we d start to see some stronger housing numbers come through especially in China this will be a a stock uh, which will uh, see a strong rebound and that's because in the next five years there isn't a lot of supply coming online in the area of zircon or titanium dioxide products so once we see the rebound it, w it should be a solid uh, performance by our Luca but today we saw further signs of demand weakness especially from China and unfortunately that was bad news for the share price down by 6.6 percent minus today that's another one we saw in some trouble this Malaysian plant has caused them so many headaches it's not funny it's been a really volatile ride uh, after a really good run up a while ago it's, it's been a huge tumble for liner shares today, down by 15.1%. And this is on the back of the High Court decision being reserved until the 8th of November. Now, this has a number of follow-on effects for liners. First of all, we will see processing at that plant if the decision turns out to be a positive one on the 8th of November, being delayed for around about a month. So initially, they were planning to start processing around about mid-October. Now it looks like that's going to be around about mid-November. So a one-month delay there. That one-month delay means means that its cash flow does come under a little bit of pressure so we probably will see a hit to FY13 earnings in the vicinity of around about 5% but of course working capital capital also very much in focus with that delay also comes a bit of pressure on working capital and we're expecting to see uh, some funding needs of about 52 million dollars by our June next year um, and whether that's through a capital raising or a working uh, capital facility we don't know as yet but we know that there's a funding agreement in place with Sujitsu Sujits, and that means that they're not allowed to borrow more than 80 million dollars so there's a bit of a cap there so I think there's just been a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of speculation creeping in on the stock on the funding side of things and that's really why we've seen such a steep tumble today down by 15.1 percent and of course more uncertainty being priced into the stock given all the problems that we've seen with that Malaysian processing plant.